So let's take a look at the workbench here, and I'll talk to you about some of the tools you'll need, and then we'll come back and we'll take care of this brake job together. So here's the collection of tools you're going to need. As you can see, these are pretty much household tools. You're going to have access to this stuff. Uh, some cars even come with this as part of their little onboard tool kit, although the newer the car, the less likely you'll have all this stuff. But what I've got here is uh, the little box there is obviously the set of brake pads. And I've got these pair of channel locks here. Uh, you can either use those or you can use a C-clamp like that to compress the puck, the... Uh, and I'll show you what a puck is once we get the, the brakes apart. But you just need one of those two items to compress that puck down in order to accept the new brake pads. So we're going to take either a 12 or a 14 millimeter wrench to break the, uh, the bolt loose in order to get your brake pads out. And like I said, a lot of car kits come with that. I've also got a set of rubber gloves. Uh, I recommend wearing gloves when working on cars. A lot of toxic chemicals. Nothing you really want to have your skin get in contact with. Now, I, and I have a, a little rag sitting over there. This uh, last thing, let me get a little closer so you can see what it is. This is not necessary. Um, it's just brake part lubricant. Uh, it's a specialized grease. It's a high temperature grease. I uh, use uh, that to slide pins. You'll want to lubricate your slide pins, things like that. While it's not necessary, and sometimes if you buy a premium set of brake pads, they'll come with that. Uh, I do recommend it. Now, a bottle of that on Amazon was $9, probably lasts a lifetime. I mean, you're using very little of it when you uh, do a brake job. If you're lucky, like I said, it'll come with a little tube or a little packet. Or sometimes at the parts stores, they'll sell them for like a dollar, just a little packet of, of brake grease, and that's all you need there. All right, I've got this in about as close as I possibly can. Um, get these cobwebs out of the way. Obviously, this little girl's a little rusty. We won't let that stop us from doing our job. So here is your 12 millimeter, and here's your 14. Like I said, on most cars, you'll just have a nut here. You won't have, or a bolt here. You won't have to worry about that. But you know, Volvo likes to be special, so we'll go ahead and lock that in and uh, break these loose. Now, like I said, they are a bit rusty. I might have to hit them with a hammer. Now, let's see here. There we go. Got that one loose. one of them. Take the bottom one off as well. Looks like that bottom one, the uh, holding nut's going to hold there. So I'll just go ahead and slip this 14 in so I can loosen it the rest of the way up. All right, I've removed the other bolt. And now we are ready to take this off. We'll expose those brake pads. That's it. That is your brake caliper. This is your brake bracket, the caliper bracket, and these are your brake pads, if you've never seen a set before. These are uh, pretty well worn out. Looks like it's losing focus there. Maybe it's just my eyesight. It's hard to tell. I'm fairly blind. But there they are. The inside one's a little thicker. That's not unusual. And outboard pads pretty well down to where it needs to be replaced. So I'll go ahead and toss those aside. Now, as far as our caliper, we have to compress that puck. That's the caliper puck right here. And all I'm going to do is take my channel locks and compress. And there it is. No special tools required. I could have used a C-clamp and, and locked that C-clamp between here and here. I can get that focus. It just doesn't want to focus, does it? Boy, it really doesn't want to focus. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe because of the cold temperature. There we go. That's a little better. I guess I'll leave it like that for now. So I could have used a C clamp and squeezed that in as well, but I just used the, the uh, channel locks and it worked fine. So we'll lay that off to the side. Now, here you have caliper slide pins. That's what these are. There's one on the top and one on the bottom. Tip this up just slightly. All right. If you've got brake grease, may I recommend that you use some. Take these out and just apply a little grease on each of those. Get my little tube of grease here. Just dab a little bit of grease on there and then go ahead and put those back into place. Try to get those rubber boots back on. I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom here. Separate that. 
put a little bit of brake grease on there and reinsert that in there okay now it's nice and free that should keep it rolling fine until uh until the next time as far as this area here this is where the brake pads are going to sit so you want to kind of clean those up these aren't rusted out too badly um, i do tend to put grease on them when i replace them but i got my wire brush here i'll just clean those up just ever so slightly just get the crud off of them really sorry about the focus i'm not sure what's going on with it but you guys can see what i'm doing here maybe if i back off a little bit yeah again i'm sorry guys this is this is the equipment that i have i gotta go with what i've got so we are ready to put our new brake pads in i put a little grease on each end of those so they slide into these holders here and they'll remain free as the uh, brake pads wear and that's it this has a little bit of a uh, spring for tension i'm just going to want those centered and we're already ready to put this thing back together again slide that on there and there it is we'll start our bolts tighten everything back up put the wheel back on and one thing a very important thing let me talk to you about right now while i'm putting this thing back together that you want to do before you drop this thing in drive or reverse is pump the brakes you've compressed this caliper all the way down and, and you know your brake pads are new but they're not so new that there won't be any movement here so you want to make sure to pump those brakes until they become firm again or you're going to have a puckering type event for sure i can promise you where your car you're going to hit the brakes and they're going to go to the floor and uh the car's still going to be rolling not an experience you want to have i'm sure okay well that was filmed in real time i might edit it down for uh you know cutting out the, the dead spots but according to the little counter here that took nine minutes and 45 seconds to do one side so 20 minutes to do both you do the math guys for less than an hour you can save about 200 dollars that's pretty sweet. If you're going to do rotors, it would be a matter of taking off, just taking a hammer, removing this piece right here, and that's not that much bigger of a deal. These rotors, they're a little rusty, but they'll make it one more oil change or one more pad life change. So I'll back the camera out, put the tire on, lower it down, and we'll wrap this thing up. All right. Well, here we are back on the ground. It's been, you know, 10, 15 minutes start to finish per side. Let's call it a half hour for both sides. When you get in this car and fire it up, before you drop it into drive or reverse, you make sure to pump those brakes until your pedal comes back to firm. Because the first pump or two, sometimes three or four, it's going to be soft. And uh, it's a real puckering type event, if you know what I mean. The next thing you should do, uh, if you don't have access to a torque wrench, uh, make sure to check the lug nut tightness after 25, 50 miles, and then check it again at 500 miles. That's just insurance. It's uh, entirely possible that a little piece of rust or something gets caught up in between the hub face and the uh, rim itself, and that can cause lug nuts not to get a good firm grip. So that's it. I'm Eric, owner of Farpoint Farms. I've been a mechanic for 25 years, and I've been poor my whole life. So, uh, yeah, I'm good at these kind of jobs. We learn out of necessity, and uh, once we learn, it's nice to pass it on to other people. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, perhaps you will consider liking and subscribing, and... I'll see you next time. Take care.